Hey there, functional medicine practitioners. Are you somebody that's giving iron to your clients or patients when it looks like maybe they need it on a lab or maybe symptomatically, or maybe you're giving them a multivitamin that has iron in it? Well, I'm going to suggest to you that that might not be the greatest idea in light of certain papers that are around today. For example, there's a lot of papers right now that are looking at the correlation between iron and neurodegenerative disease like dementia and Alzheimer's. Here's one paper that says, Excessive iron contributes to the deposition of beta amyloid and the formation of neurofibrillary tangles, which in turn promotes the development of Alzheimer's disease. Therefore, iron-targeted therapeutic strategies have become a new direction. Now, they're talking about chelation in these patients in order to try to get rid of some of the iron, but my question is, is why are we giving iron in the first place if down the road it looks like it might be causing some problems? Here's another paper that says, compared to healthy controls, Alzheimer's disease subjects had increased ferritin iron in the hippocampus which is supposedly one of the first parts of the brain that starts to go when Alzheimer's disease starts. It doesn't say how it got there or why, but once again, should we be giving iron unless we're absolutely 100% sure that somebody needs it? But it's not just neurodegenerative disease. There's a great quote that says, iron is like chocolate to bacteria, and that's because microbes love iron. They need it for their survival and their replication. Now, the body will sequester iron on purpose in order to starve the microbe and preserve the organism, which in this case is us. Here's an interesting paper. It says these data suggest that even modest oral supplements with highly soluble iron as typically used in low income settings could promote bacteremia by accelerating early phase bacterial growth prior to the induction of immune defenses. Well, that doesn't sound good. And here is yet one more paper that says humans respond to infection with inflammatory cytokine induced hypopheremia. That's just what I said, the sequestering of iron, intentionally making it look low on a lab, low iron, low ferritin, high TIBC, even changes to the CBC, making it look like an iron deficiency anemia, intentionally by the body in order to preserve the body, make it survive, and starve out the microbe. The paper goes on to say, this association, as well as the growing literature linking iron, now listen to this, to both impaired immunity and heightened microbial virulence, that's not good, calls into question the value of iron supplementation during inflammation and infection. Then the question becomes, who's inflamed? Who has an infection? What if it's subclinical? Do we know this? Should we be giving iron to people? And if so, when? The last thing I want to say in full disclosure is this uh, is an argument, a discussion that is not finalized in the scientific literature. However, I, for one, don't want to be on the side of the ones experimenting with your patients and then learning that, whoops, maybe we shouldn't have been giving iron as easily and readily as we should have. If you like this kind of information and want to learn more, check out metabolicfitnesspro.com. God bless.